Good morning. Monday morning, heading to Tel Aviv for some bonkers back-to-back meetings. This morning, I'm meeting Avi Katz, the younger brother of the editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem Post. After that meeting, Sarah Snow, the one and only. Later, I'm meeting Tamir from Lemonade and a whole bunch of other meetings throughout the day. It's going to be epic. Here we go. I made it to Tel Aviv bright and early, got myself a parking spot. Right behind me is the headquarters of the Israeli Defense Forces, and this is literally the last parking spot right before the base. So that was pretty clutch. Heading now to WeWork, Dubnov, the first WeWork in Israel. Like I said, starting the day with Avi Katz, Yaakov Katz, the editor-in-chief of the Jerusalem Post's younger brother. And uh, after that, just a whole marathon. Very excited about this day. And I would say this Tel Aviv morning is like a seven. It's pretty beautiful. Not the best, but it's clearing up. Skies are getting blue. Something very awesome about Tel Aviv this early in the morning. Love it here. Sitting here at WeWork Dubnov, the, as I mentioned, the first WeWork, I think, ever to open in Israel. And, you know, first of all, I just want to give a shout out to the WeWork team, Benji Singer, an old friend and a serial entrepreneur who started WeWork Israel. The truth is, we spoke about this years ago. He had a plan to open it and I was intrigued. But then when I saw how fast he built this place and executed this place, it's just, it's amazing. Then he opened the next one and the next one and the next one, I think they have like, I don't know, seven or eight locations around Israel, something like that. And it's just growing, you know, every day. I'm deeply impressed with this company as a whole, but specifically when it comes to Israel. And, you know, that aside, the people they were able to recruit to this team, just really unbelievable. The high caliber of people that I know, whether it's Ron Gura, Alon Carmel, Lee Knott, Osna, like really across the board, they've managed to recruit truly unbelievable people. My friend Freda just uh, just joined WeWork from the mayor of Jerusalem's office yesterday. They announced that one of Israel's leading tech journalists, Inbal Orpaz, who's really widely regarded as the top tech journalist in this country, or one of them for sure, just joined WeWork to help Israeli startups scale. The bottom line is they're, they're, they're building this team like, you know, at the highest levels, and it's, it's mad impressive. But that wasn't what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about was a topic that I've mentioned on the vlog several times, but I've never really gotten into, and that is my new book, which I'm writing every day. How am I writing? Many people have asked, how are you writing? How do you have the time between the vlog and social and the blog and your, you know, companies you're advising and your own startup and everything you're doing, how do you find the time? So I, you know, I don't want to call it a hack, but it's kind of the best hack ever. I dictate on the way to work. I'm in the, the car for an hour on the way to Tel Aviv every day, and usually an hour at least, if not an hour and a half on the way back. You know, that's two to two and a half hours wasted, basically, so I dictate using my iPhone. I'd say 95% accuracy, so I have to then go and edit afterwards, but I'm now up to chapter eight. So I'm learning, you know, what has to happen next. You know, as of now in my outline, I have 10 chapters, but from what I know about books, and I don't know very much, I've never written a book before, it has to be, you know, way more than 20, 30,000 words, and that's where I'm at right now, so I have to, I think I'm gonna have to write a little more than that before I, you know, go and figure out how to publish it, etc. But I'm, it's very exciting, definitely something I've been wanting to do for years. The topic of the book, as many of you who follow me on social know, is giving in business. And what do I mean by giving? I mean, when you're a giver, when you position yourself as someone who's facilitating success for others, yes, it's good for karma. It's great to put good things into the universe, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about financial returns and how facilitating success for others and helping others succeed in, in the business world actually ends up bringing you closer to success, your own success. And that's basically accidentally, because I never planned this, how I built my own career. You know, companies I helped early on came back and said to me, join us as an advisor or whatever it is, blogging where I didn't monetize for many, many years has opened doors and brought opportunities to me that I would never have dreamed of. Meetings that I never thought, you know, I should take and I did take because someone asked to meet and I met them and it ended up bringing unbelievable opportunities and, and opening doors. So just overall, the concept of being a giver in business and not worrying about your own pocket, but worrying about the success of others is just good business. That's the topic of the book. Uh, and the latest chapter that I just wrote actually was not part of the plan, but I've seen one too many of those posts in my Facebook feed about you know, a designer or a marketer or whoever complaining about the fact that a company wanted to hire them or to use their, you know, to engage them in a professional relationship and offer them equity or awareness or impressions or whatever, long-term returns, not short-term returns, and how that designer or that marketer then goes to Facebook and says, what am I, some kind of like, you know, I need some returns, I pay to pay for groceries, and yeah, I understand where they're coming from, I'm not judging anyone, but to me that's, I feel like commenting, every time I feel like commenting, no, don't you get it, you're not thinking right. You know, you do this now, you prove your worth, 
you know, that person is delighted by the value you've provided to them. They go tell their friend, their friend tells their friend, and they come and they, they ask you for help, you help them again, you ask for nothing. Eventually, one or all of those people, those entrepreneurs, whoever you're helping, does realize how valuable you are and, and come comes to you and, and you know, asks you to work with them in a more official capacity or, or or does offer to compensate you in some way, long game. And again, that's what's happened to me over the years. Literally, that's how it all played out. So th these these posts that keep appearing in my Facebook feed of people complaining that they're not getting paid up front for some work just made me like write this last chapter. And so I, I just finished chapter seven, up to chapter eight now. I'm very, very excited about it. But um, you know, definitely looking for, I guess, a publisher, an agent, any advice really on writing a book. Never read, wrote a book before. I have many friends who have, and I'm gonna definitely tap into that pool of knowledge. I have already begun doing that, but um, if you're watching this and you have written a book or know anybody who has, or has, you know, have any advice for me, I'm all ears because I'm a complete newbie. Just got an email from uh, Sarah that Sarah's know that we're gonna be making our meeting earlier. So I, I'm, you know, I've, like I said, a lot of great meetings today, but Sarah's, she's something else. I don't know what to call her. She's, um, I've watched her career kind of develop over the years. And if you look her up online, Sarah Snow, you'll see a woman who's probably the, one of the most creative people that you'll ever meet, you'll ever see. And her work is just, I mean, forget the fact that she's millions and millions of views on every video she posts, but like it's just super duper high quality stuff. Anyway, very excited to call her a friend, very excited that I get to meet her today, and I will absolutely, I told her I'm interviewing and that's not a question, so I will definitely be getting her on camera. You're going to meet an unbelievable person, and that's just one of many meetings today, so I'm very excited about it, but yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the book and how excited I am to be writing a book, so uh, stay tuned for more updates on that. Let's do this first meeting now. All right, so I know I say this a lot and you know, okay, whatever. I, I say I'm meeting legendary people. I say, the truth is in most cases, it's really true. There are amazing people in this ecosystem as a whole. You know, Sarah knows what I think of her. This woman sitting right next to me, Sarah Snow. Yeah. By the way, I think I, we must have talked about this in the past. Your name is like, is that really her name? Like it's one of those names. Like, Where's my ID? I believe you, I believe you. But it's just an interesting, where does this name Snow come from? This is a discussion for another time. Anyway, Sarah Snow right here. I, I don't even know what to call you. You're like a, you're like an internet. I know what to call you. You're an internet sensation. That's what you are. I, you are Here's the problem. Heard it here first. This is, here's the problem, though. It's, I, it's probably not a problem. It's part of your charm, but like, you're, you're like, unlike many marketers out there, unlike many content people out there, you actually are very, very low key. Really, like in face to face, like you're very humble, which is again part of your charm. But we have to, like, I think we have to work on that. Okay. What? Do you have any tips? Yeah. I, I believe that you don't know how amazing you are. People are gonna think I'm flirting with you. I'm not flirting with you. We're, we're like we're like brother and sister. Yeah. So it's all good. We're, we're close enough. But anyway, point is, I don't think you. Maybe you don't realize how amazing you are. That's the truth. We're gonna work on it. But anyway, let's focus for one second here. Hello, focus. Okay. Who the heck are you? Who is Sarah Snow? I don't really know if I have any definition of like who I am, but I uh, guess that like we're all a product of the things that we do and the things that we surround ourselves with. So let me just answer that. Respond to that response by saying that if anybody else I know. Like, period. If any other person I, I know would have answered me that question, I would have rolled my eyes. In your case, though, like, I know, because I know you, we know each other for a long time, that, like, this, you're, like, actually deeply, you're, like, a very profound, like, every everything that comes out of your mouth, maybe that's why I view it as humility. It's not actually humility, maybe it's just, you actually are very calculated with the things that you let out into the world. I try to be. So maybe that translates directly into what you do. It's a good segue into what you do. I'm gonna just say one word, and then I'm gonna ask you to tell me more, but, like, as far back as I can remember, Sarah has been working generating the most moving, meaningful content, period, on the internet. And she used to leverage that to build a certain brand, and she used to leverage it to work at another brand. The bottom line is, and she's doing a lot of things like all of us are. Today, Sarah releases videos, how often? Um, I try to release them every week, but it's been a little bit difficult, so I, every two weeks, every... Where do you get that footage? Okay, wait, wait, I'm skipping getting ahead of myself here. Hold on a second. Sarah releases videos once every, let's say, two weeks mm -hmm. that reach audiences of 5, 10, 12 million people, views on these videos. And unlike many other viral videos out there, this is a purely organic reach. People yeah. actually watch. How many shares did your last video get? I think it's about 300,000 shares. I have to check that. I have to like wrap my head around that number. 300, not views, 300,000 shares. That is a person that watched, enjoyed, and decided to then take that video and share it with their audience. That is the highest level of engagement that I can think of. 300,000 shares. Yeah. That's bonkers. That's, yeah. Okay, give me, give me some background here. Give me your background, talking about what you've done, and let's, let's do that for like 30 seconds, and let's talk about what you do now. 
So no pressure though. Oh uh, no problem. I've been just I've been creating videos for as long as I could remember. I have worked with a lot of brands and making videos for them. Um, I've worked with some media companies also optimizing their video, but I always had a love for making content. And I think for me, what I started doing was started taking some of the things that I believe in and creating um, visual stories out of them. So I try to make sure that all of the pieces of content that I put out in the world have purpose and have meaning and can actually maybe help someone that's going through a tough time because for me, I think growing up, I used to turn to videos and media to try to like help some of the things that I was going through as a kid and I hope that when people watch my videos, they can see that someone else out there gets it. So listen, let me ask you this. Again, how long do we know each other? We like a decade, I don't know, whatever, eight, nine, ten, whatever amount of years. I mean, I, I should say I, I knew of you before we knew each other, but I'm, I'm like, a, at least on the exterior, I'm a pretty tough guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't seem like a, you know, I'm like a mushy character. Your videos make me cry. Um, no, you, you know I'm telling you the truth. You know I wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. Like, people, and I read the comments, like, people are deeply, deeply moved by your work. Like, people say to me all the time, I, I reach a wide audience and, like, I'm able to, like, reach people in Silicon Valley. I'm like, it's like a, a joke. It's like a microscopic little number compared, I mean, you, what's, it, what's it like to wake up in the morning? And honestly, I'm asking you a genuine question now. What is it like to wake up in the morning knowing that your work, that you put, first of all, blood, sweat, and tears into, but also that, that I'm gonna sound so mushy today, I apologize, but like literally is, is the language of your soul. Like you mean it from like the depths of your, have impacted millions of lives. How satisfying yeah. is that of a feeling? It's, it's very satisfying and I never expected my videos to go as viral as they've gotten so far and I think this is something that probably a lot of content creators will talk about but and this is probably not the answer that you were expecting but it actually like it causes some anxiety. To, for you. Yeah, to put out. Um, you have like you have expectations already. I guess it's expectations, and it's also um, responsibility because the larger your audience gets, the more of a responsibility you have to make sure that. Because you never know how this yeah. will impact. And by the way, in your, can we talk about your official job a little, or you don't? Want yeah, to? yeah. So you you work at Wisdo. What's your official title there? I'm director of audience development and video. Okay, so Wisdo.com. You've had the opportunity to meet with people who are coping with life's literally biggest and most difficult challenges. Mm -hmm. And you've impacted their lives through wisdo.com, which is mm -hmm. perfect synergy with kind of what you do in general. But at the end of the day, the bottom line is, across the internet, whether it's your videos, whether it's on social. Can I say something about wisdo for a second? No. Yes. Okay, so actually like, wisdo really did um, open my eyes to a lot of the different challenges that people go through in life, because that's what their product's about. And they just released their iOS app oh. in the App Store. I didn't know that. Yeah. By the way, what is with Ido and Boaz? How come they don't, like, they forgot the little people? It's like, what? How come I didn't know that? How come they didn't let me know? Like, what, you don't, but what's that? Can you what's that mean? Let me know that their video, that their iOS app is on you know, you're in big trouble. Yeah, no, but it's an amazing app, and basically, like, you fill out what you've been through in your life, and then it connects you with people that have been through the same thing. That's amazing. Which is pretty, it's amazing. Okay. So, I, yeah, you were gonna say something, sorry. No, so I was just saying, like, connecting to my videos, like, I feel like Wisdo really has really inspired me to create better content and create more meaningful. I'm gonna now say something, I'm not even asking. Yeah. If this offends you, I'll ask Joseph to edit it out, but I'm going to say it anyway. And I, by the way, I, we might have to edit it out because you might not be allowed to talk about this, but to me, what you've done and what you've built is so super duper unique that I think you need to be building a, an empire from a business perspective here. And, you know, I think you're so focused on doing good for the world and, and that's beautiful that you maybe forgot about your own business, let's not call it goals, but a little bit maybe business, how to capitalize on this. So I threw out an idea at Sarah just now, which she didn't hate. Bottom line is, you know, and, I, and I'm connected to a lot of people on, online, uh, video experts, people that, that are doing remarkable things in the video space. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say, again, at the risk of maybe embarrassing you, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm sitting with number one right here, honestly. I mean, it, not only in terms of views, because there are people out there that have 100 million views, but like the, the level of the quality of the content that you put out there is just bonkers. You know, to the point that like one of my favorite entrepreneurs, Benny Chevy, reaches out to me last week. He's like, "Who is Sarah Snow? How do I not know her? I'm ob obsessed with her videos." Like, you know, that's the level. Like, people, legends are watching your stuff. And so I'm saying to you, here's an offer without asking her permission. If you're a, a, um, a company, a startup, an enterprise, a bit, whatever, a business that's going all in on video, and you know, everyone wants to go viral. And, I, and you know, at the end of the day, I cannot say that I know another single person on planet Earth that has cracked the mechanism to go viral besides Sarah Snow. If you want to build out your your video audience, reach out to Sarah. That's all I'm saying. I'd love people, to help. Happy to reach you.
Um, you can just send me a Facebook message or... You, you see your Facebook messages. You're still, you're at a level of startup that you can still handle your... Well, actually, it, it might go to like the... Other. The other folk, but you can, uh, you can send me an email at sarahsnowvideos at gmail.com. Great. Sarah Snow Videos. S-A-R-A-H. Mm -hmm. Snow, S-N-O-W, videos at gmail.com. I'm telling you right now, I've said this before, you know, with different interviews that I've done that you should reach out to the people I'm in. If you are into video and you do not reach out to Sarah Snow to get her opinion or advice on something, I'm not gonna, I don't, we don't use profanity on this vlog, that's all I'm saying, just reach out. <laughs> In any case, Sarah, I have one request. Yes. Do not forget the little people. Absolutely. Promise me that. I promise. Because I, I'm telling you, like, I'm, I, you know, it's funny, because again, we've been friends forever, but like, when I sit with you, I'm, I, people say this all the time, because they see my selfies, and they see my stuff on Facebook, like, it's weird to see in real life, despite the fact that we're friends forever, like, when I see you, I'm like, wow, like, I feel like I'm sitting with a celebrity, I, I mean it, honestly, so just keep doing what you're doing. Keep focusing on value and on impact, and um, yeah, don't forget me. Oh, I know. I'll never forget you, though. Oh, thanks. All right, just keep at it. That's the bottom line. Thank Good you. luck with everything. Thank you. Those are some great morning meetings. Now, heading to Lemonade HQ. Probably the hottest company in Israel. I've spoken about them before. They are building the next generation of insurance. So everything you think you know about insurance, forget. Lemonade.com. Anyway, I'm going to meet Tamir, who leads growth at Lemonade. I think before that he was at Fiverr. He mentors at Google and Microsoft, as I do. Never actually met the guy, as far as I know. And i um, going to try very hard to get him on camera. Good chance I'll fail, as he is quite a hot shot. And like I said, they're working on a massive, massive company and problem. So there's a good chance I want to keep it under wraps, under the radar, but I will try. In any case though, camera or no camera, super pumped to meet the guy and to hear how he is leading growth at one of the fastest growing companies I've ever encountered. So yeah, pretty excited. made it to Serona, where Lemonade headquarters is located. Before I go meet Tamir, I'm going to be having a spontaneous, long overdue meeting with my sister from another mister, Natasha Shine, who works at Rounds, or previously Rounds, now acquired by Kick, one of the hottest companies today in the ICO space. So um, yeah, spontaneous meeting with her. She's sharing a building with Samsung Next. I don't know if you guys recall, I was at Samsung Next a couple of months ago meeting with Roy and Orly. Anyway, that time when I was there, I wanted to go visit Kick, but the timing didn't work out. This time, very excited to catch up with Natasha. Okay, so as I told you, this was a super spontaneous meeting with the one and only, a super spontaneous meeting with my sister from another mister. It's a thing now. It is. That's it, we gotta say that every time now. Uh, Natasha Shine, the one and only. Honestly, because she's rushed and this is gonna be a, you know, a longer conversation next time, we're gonna jump right in, okay? Because everyone's talking about blockchain, crypto, all that stuff. Natasha just explained, I think for the first time ever to me, how one can actually leverage crypto. And it's a much longer conversation, but real quick. Rounds where you were, CMO? Correct. Was acquired by Kick. Quick Kick, if you're not familiar, and what rock have you been living under, has been one of the leading names in the messenger space. But it's now much, much more than that. It's a full blown platform. Kick. It has been for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is freaking out. My camera does not want to cooperate today. Long story short, in addition to Kick acquiring rounds for your just I guess technical social abilities, putting that aside for one for one second now. You guys ICO'd, which is you know initial coin offering. We're not gonna get into that now. But unlike Bitcoin, unlike Ethereum, unlike all these cryptos, which you know, the jury's out. We don't know yet if it's gonna be a success or not a success. There's not much I can do with it. In your case, you built a currency called Kin. Kin. And as someone who's worked in the mobile space, both of us have worked in the mobile space for a long time, one of the biggest problems in the app development space and for app developers is to monetize, right? You can have like I mean, stupid banners on the top of your app, obviously not very engaging. You can have paper download, which is just ineffective, no one pays for apps. There's really no good way. And so you guys are creating another whole way to monetize, which is completely intuitive, completely logical and rational, which is very simple. If I'm using your app, let's say you're an app developer, I'm using your app. If I'm engaging with your app, if I'm providing value to your user base, if it's on Quora answering questions, Flipboard creating magazines, what other examples did you give me? Um, Kick creating a public group. Right, creating a group on Kick. If I'm bringing value to that app, there's no reason that you as the app developer should not compensate. Me. Yep. So now you're compensating me, wow, that's windy, with Kin, your, your currency, 
which I can actually spend and use in your marketplace. Yeah. What can I buy with the kit with Kin? Is it called like one Kin, two Kin? Is that yeah. Like, okay. Um, so firstly, it's the marketplace. So there's earning and spending opportunities. Okay. Um, on one hand, I can earn Kin either through native experiences within the application or through branded surveys or things like that. And then I can spend it either in peer to peer. So for example, if you create an amazing public group and I want to join, then I can use my Kin to spend it. Or on branded spending opportunities. So for example, like a week subscription to Spotify or your next free ride, your next ride on yeah. Is it all digital stuff? Yeah. Um, can it buy physical stuff? It can stuff? be both. You, so you're, you're really creating like the place to actually spend digital currency. I mean, yep. cryptocurrency. Exactly. But why isn't, I'm just curious, like, what are your, why hasn't Bitcoin, as Bitcoin created its own, like, I mean, why can't I, till today, with all, after all these years and all the hype, why can't I go and spend my Bitcoin on Amazon? How is it, how is that not a thing? How has no one else thought of this? Um, I mean, so you can spend Bitcoin in different utility, on different places, but Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're on the infrastructure layer. And what we're doing, which is unique, because we're on the application network. So right now we're based off of Ethereum. We'll oh. soon be migrating to other uh, oh, cool. blockchain infrastructures. Okay. Do you know, so we're on the application level. Do you know this guy right there across the whole thing over there? That's Uriel Ochayun, an old guy. Do you know he started TechCrunch France? You knew that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, he started TechCrunch France. This camera is going to cooperate. I don't care. Uh, Uriel Ochayun over there is actually one of the leading authorities. He knows this stuff about Bitcoin. So I feel like everywhere we go, I, just, I was just sitting outside of uh, WeWork Dubno and like, someone walks out and is like, no, the banks are going to regulate. And everyone's talking about it. Like yeah. it's, it's, well, it's unbelievable, but you guys are actually delivering and you guys... We're working with real partners, it's we're unbelievable. building real technology. How big was your ICO? A hundred million. A hundred million dollars. And how long did that take you? Yeah. Not not the preparation, the actual ICO. It was about two weeks. Two weeks you raised a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. Just to give you context, when I'm if I'm a startup and I want to raise a hundred million dollars, the process will take me anywhere to six to eight, to eight, eight months to a year, I would say. And you raised it, in, okay, that's bonkers. Well, 50 million of that was pre-sale um, by like accredited investors. I don't know what's 50, happening here. 50 million. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. From the crowd though. This is really frustrating me. The yeah. thing I think yes. about ICOs and specifically of what we were trying to achieve with Kin is like Kin is a real utility. And right. so the more people that participated, it means that they want to use Kin to have real world um, interactions. So whether you can take your Kin and earn and spend it on real applications, basically we're bringing a new model for people to use cryptocurrency. I get it. Bring so, it to the masses. You know, people talk about, hey, what up? Come say hi, come say hi. Come say hi, jump jump in. Who's this? Who, who are you? Hi. The one, hey. I'm Kat. The one and only. What up? How you know, this is, the, this is the thing with Tel Aviv. You walk around here, you see stars. You're next. Let me just finish up. She has to go right. Go I'm in, going, stay yeah, here. I'm going to a meeting. Oh. I have right. to actually have a we, meeting, you know? We, okay, one minute, one minute. Okay, Natasha, real quick. So everyone talks about demand and supply, supply and demand, I should say, with crypto. The more people want it, the more people, the, the value goes up, etc., etc. But right now, it's all based on paka paka, as they say. It's like abstract. You can't really do anything with it. You guys are changing that. I would say that um, we're more focused on the utility of building something that is practical, that's going to be engaging in every person's everyday life. It's not necessarily about the value of the cryptocurrency, the token itself. It's about the utility, creating something that's meaningful and a new way for digital services to monetize. I love one thing. I love that you're kicking butt. That's all. Thank you. But you've been kicking butt for a long time, and now you're really kicking butt. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, go to your meeting. We're going to catch up. Like okay. Normally, this doesn't count. By the way, this totally does not count towards our annual catch-up. Lunch. Lunch soon. See you soon.